Now at this point I have all of the wall segments assembled and I went ahead and spray painted them black. I did forget one step though after I already spray painted them and that has to do with these three pieces right here. It has to do with piece A, piece B, and piece E. And that has to do with the roof. And let me show you especially on piece E right here. You'll see on the side of the roof right here when the roof slopes down and it comes in and it kind of rams into this log, it kind of hits this log. You see how that log jets out? Now I specifically used the correct corner so we wouldn't have as much to sand. And if you tried to lay a roof on that and put it across there, you'll notice that it kind of hits that log. It doesn't allow that roof really to set flat like it should because that's the roof flat, but that log makes it kind of come out just a little bit. Now there are a couple of ways to solve this corner here. Uh, one way is just to ignore it and don't worry about it because when you put the roof on, uh, you kind of see it a little bit when you're looking right straight down at it. But the roof is going to extend forward and underneath the eaves you're really not going to see it that much anyway. Uh, if it does bother you enough that you want to fix it, one way to do it is to take a file like right here and what we can do is just kind of file that down a little bit until it is flush with the rest of the roof. The other thing you can do is simply take something like a hobby knife and then what I'm doing right here is I'm just taking it and kind of chipping away at the corner a little bit. And you don't have to do a lot. Uh, and this is dental stone so it's pretty hard but really it just takes you a few seconds to kind of chip that down. And then after you get it chipped down you can, I'm going to respray paint this corner again. Okay, now I'm not going to take the usual amount of time I do on my painting videos here. Basically, we have spray painted all of the cabin sections black, and I made sure I got it down into all the cracks. The color of paint here, as I've got, is the dirt color paint, and I'm wiping most of it off on a paper towel, but not all of it. I, you know, you, you don't want to go really lightly on this, but then you don't want to slop it on either. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this dirt color, and go over the top of the black. So you notice that I can actually see it going on, but the trick is to put it on thin enough so that the black actually transmutes through the brown that you're putting on. Because I don't want just straight dirt brown. I mean, if I wanted it straight dirt brown, I would have just went ahead and started out by painting it straight dirt brown. But I want that black to come through it. So it's going to mute that brown a little bit, and it's going to darken that brown a little bit. So it's going to be a really deep brown. I'm going to pick a little paint back off of my, uh, off of my uh, paper towel there, and then I'm going to push hard. I'm going to try to get it down as deep into the cracks as I can with having very little paint on the brush. And you can see that that's actually starting to, uh, to uh, come up there. And the paint will actually dry slightly darker than when you put, put it on. So when you paint this thing on and brush it on, you'll find that if you wait just a minute, it'll actually be a little darker. Uh, a lot of times, you know, if you put it on and you see big streaks, you go, oh, I wish I hadn't have done that. Uh, a lot of times those will go away. Uh, Anyway, uh, once again, I've, I've done the easier flat side, and when I flip it over to the bumpy side, I have to be more careful because these parts that stick up are really going to take the paint. So what I'm going to do on those is I'm going to try to go around some of the other area and then kind of hit those last after I got most of the paint off of the brush. But anyway, you can see the difference between it here when I've had the brown and then here, uh, that's just straight spray painted black, and this is with the brown on top of it. Okay, the final dry brush that I'm going to do here is the Castle Gray Light Color. It's a light gray. And this one probably takes the least amount of time, but you have to be the most careful with it. I've put it on a paper towel and I brushed most of it off so almost nothing comes out. You see, I can see a little bit on my the palm of my hand here. so. I've almost got a little too much paint. Yeah, see what I'm barely dragging over it? I'm starting to see white already just a little bit. That's a little too much for me. I, I'd like to get just a little bit more of it out. I want to just be able to go lightly with a, with a few strokes on it and then kind of be done. So what this is going to do is it's going to highlight those top ridges on it and I don't want it to go down very far and it's also going to gray it out just a little bit kind of like uh, you know like driftwood or, or something like that so what I'm going to do is just really lightly go over it 
and you can kind of see that that's coming out. I'm going to go just a little bit more. I don't want to go over so much that I completely gray it out and lose the brown. So right about there, see that didn't take very long at all. Right about there is just about what I want to do with the gray there. And if you want, you know, I can compare it. This is what the previous brown is, and this is the one with just the light gray. It's just enough to gray it out. Really gives it a nice weathered look. Okay, at this point I have the roof. It's uh, all completed, and I have spray painted it black. Uh, the next step, I wanted to make this a little different from the cabin, so the color would be a little different, so I'm just going to use all blue grays on here. So this is the Castle Gray Medium color, and I'm going to dry brush it, and I'm not going to be too careful because I'm going to do a highlight dry brush with the Castle Gray Light after I get done. So if there's streaks on this, uh, I'm not going to worry too much about it. So what I'm going to do is, uh, you can see that as soon as I put this brush on here, you can kind of see that streaks are happening right away. That's all right. I mean, this roof right now is black, so I can press pretty hard and get a lot of, uh, a lot of detail to come out on this. Uh, and it may be possible that after you dry brush this on, you may look at it and set it on top of your cabin and go, hey, you know what? That looks just great the way it is. Maybe I won't do anything else to it. Maybe the color difference will be good enough uh, that you'll kind of like it the way it is. And, and, you know, I had intended, I did a test that uh, when I, it, it's actually going to come out like this when I get done. But, you know, what I think I may do, now that I'm just putting it on here, I may just see what this looks like on top of the cabin just as it is. Maybe the roof darker will look a little bit better. Okay, here's the finished cabin. I decided just to do that one dry brush. Uh, and you notice that it's just a little bit blotchy here and there, and I kind of like that. It gives it kind of a random pattern. If I had done the medium gray and the light gray, it would have been this light. And I'm thinking that that might have been just a little bit too light. I kind of like it being a little darker than the rest of the cabin. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and glue this cabin together. Uh, if you notice on the floor, I did not do the light gray dry brush on it, just because, you know, I like to have the floor a little bit darker for something, you know, to make it look a little different because people walk over it and it gets dirt and that sort of thing. So a lot of times that'll, uh, floors will just be darker. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to test fit together. Now keep in mind I, I had already test fit together before I painted it. That's a good idea so that in case something doesn't fit you can trim it up because if you trim it up now you're going to trim off the paint and if you trim off the paint that doesn't really you know uh, uh, doesn't really work quite as well. Probably the easiest way is to start with the back wall and you know these little uh, these little nibs that step out those are going to be exposed against the back of the house. So you want to turn that around and this will just simply drop down uh, into the area right here. So I had test fit that before. So that's the back wall. Uh, then I have a side wall here. Make sure the shutters are facing outward. So there's a side wall that's going to go here. There's a side wall that's going to go here. And you notice it's higher on the top and thinner on the bottom. So don't be sure you don't get it upside down when you put it on there. So there should be more logs across the top than there are across the bottom. So this side piece will go here. We'll have the front that goes right along the uh, front of the cabin just like this. Let me scoot this back a little bit. And then of course your porch is just going to slide and it's going to kind of drop right in the front there. So that's basically what the front of the cabin is going to look like. So if we spin this thing around and I need to, whoa, I need to be careful here. Um, if we go around to the back side, the way you assemble the back side here, here's the uh, uh, back of the cabin. Basically, you have a simple wall on one side, F, and there's a simple wall on the other. And you notice I've got these little logs here so that it kind of joins right up to those right there. And then this right here will go on the outside and it will just drop, uh, drop right onto there. So it'll just kind of set in like that, and then we'll have our back roof. <music> 